in scleroderma, the basis for this is probably related to the effect of vi vasculopathy on the nerves to the gut. And once those nerves are affected, then secondarily, you'll get fibrosis and decreased motility. And it progresses right from the mouth all the way through the GI tract, through the rectum and anus. And it's interesting that it's, it's sequential as it is. But that's the story. So with patients with scleroderma, you think about motility issues early on in the esophagus, dryness in the mouth. You think about uh, heartburn, strictures, gastroparesis, and then GI uh, effects on the lower uh, and uh, on the lower gut, including the um, ileum and the duodenum, and then the colon, and the secondary results of such decrease in motility are things such as symptoms of heartburn, nausea, vomiting, early satiety, lower down in the gut, bloating, diarrhea, constipation, not usually abdominal pain, and finally, um, incontinence of the bowel, which can be a terribly um, embarrassing and difficult problem. When you have decreased motility, then the normal sort of housekeeping waves of the midgut and the colon are decreased. Consequently, bacteria, which are usually pretty much um, located only in the colon, begin to move north, get through the ileum, and invade the small bowel. In doing so, they do a number of things. These bacteria, and you know there's, there are 500 species of bacteria in the colon, and it isn't as if there's a, a, all of the move, but there's a predominance. There's a takeover of the gut, a normal environment by a, a relatively limited number of bacteria. And when they move north, they begin to, in fact, use the um, things like vitamins, nutrients, and so there can be malnutrition, there will be gas, there will often be things such as nausea or vomiting, even though it's lower gut symptoms. And the way to treat that, of course, for the moment, would be best to make the motility better. We have a limited number of drugs which affect that. Tegaceride can do that. Somatostatin can do that in the lower gut. The uh, drugs used frequently in the upper gut, such as domperidone, procalipride, um, erythromycin, metoclopramide, really affect mostly the esophagus and the stomach. So in the lower gut, the use of tegaceride, somatostatin would be better. And then try to rebalance the GI environment. And for that, you can use back, uh, uh, antibiotics. The, the, the best antibiotic, quite honestly, is rifaximin. It's non-absorbed, consequently the um, side effect profile is better. It's a broad spectrum, it works very well, and you can give it to your patients for two weeks at a time, two weeks on, two weeks off. Sometimes patients have uh, take uh, one, uh, one round of it and then they don't need it for months thereafter. But usually they're going to need recurrence. If you can't get the rifaxin, then combinations of other drugs, uh, metronidazole, Neomycin, doxycycline are often used alone or in combination. And with that, you can get a response, not usually cure, but a response in well over half of the patients. And I would say that in general, I think we can help our patients with GI symptoms quite significantly.